Hey everybody, this is Larry and uh, today we're going to go over how to set up and align and use the low profile vise. Our low profile vise is a new um, item for us. We released it about six months ago and in the last six months we can't keep it in stock. As fast as we can run them, people are buying them. However, there's been a couple of questions on how to set them up, how to line them, how to properly use them. So uh, in order to address those concerns, this video is going to do that. Um, if you see here on the table, this is what's required to install this. We've got our low profile vise, of course. We've got two T-nuts. We've got two 3816 screws or bolts. We've got a dial indicator. This will be used for dialing in straightness once we get it, get it set up. And then we've got a 316 um, hex wrench that we're gonna use and that'll be used to do all the adjustment. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove everything off the tabletop. Let's put our dial indicator over here someplace safe. And we're gonna put our vise in the background here. We're gonna slide in our T-slot nut, our upper right hand one, we're gonna slide in on the right side. And he's just gonna drop that in and slide it right over. And leave it somewhere about two or three inches right from the edge there. And then for the other one, we're gonna put on the lower left side and we're gonna slide it in approximately the same amount. Now we're going to grab our low profile vise and we're going to slide it on. What we want to do is make sure we wipe off the face first and then we're going to slide it on to the table so that um, if there were any chips on the table or anything, they're now wiped off. We're going to align it with the lower left. I like to go with the lower left first. And all we're going to do is we're going to stick our 3 8 16 screw in there. And we're going to snug it up and then break it loose so that we can shuff, shuffle the, uh, the vise left and right. So that's tight, we'll just break it loose. Now we can shuttle it left and right, and there's no binding, or there's a slight binding there, so we'll just do that. But we don't want any binding, so then that doesn't make any more work for us. But we're gonna slide the, the vise down until we align up with the other 3 8 16 hole. So I'm gonna exaggerate that, and we're gonna move back over here. Now we're in alignment, and from there, we're gonna go ahead and slide in our last 3 8 16 socket head cap screw. And we'll go ahead and snug this one up as well. So on this, I like to, to tighten them and then back them off. And then I can just slide it in for adjustment. There we go. And I'll do, um, I'll move the clamp either you can do this either all the way forward or you can do it all the way back is the simplest way to start out with it i like to do it all the way forward just my personal preference so i'm bringing it all the way forward and you'll see both of those nuts will snug up there and we're just going to snug the lower left one for right now and just snug it don't don't overly tighten it just bring it snug so that it's hard to to move um, and we want to center the vise somewhere in the table if you have a scale you could use a scale and measure from side to side to, to locate that. Um, however, we're not going to do that with this right now. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to move the, uh, the, the clamping block out of the way so that we can um, align the vise. And that's pretty good. Just slide it all the way to the end because we're just going to use a three or four inch section here of, of the uh, vise to dial it in. And uh, in order to do that, we're going to power up our machine, which we already have done because the lights are on. And we're going to drop in our dial test indicator. What I like to do with this is put the, um, the spindle lock in place so that you can't spin the spindle. It just kind of stays put and it's not going to shift side to side on us. Now we're going to loosen up our collet and we're going to push our tool holder in place. Make sure that's good and snug. And where is that hole at? Why is it not in there? Here we go. Make sure we're good and aligned. And that's a... So 
sometimes takes a minute to get that dovetail out of the way. There we go. So now we've got that aligned straight. We've got our spindle lock in place so the spindle's not moving. Now we're gonna jog our, our dial indicator down and we're gonna touch either the left or the right hand side of our, of our um, low profile vise. So we'll go over into our jogging menu and we're gonna put it into gross mode or one, well, the largest mode we can or the movement, which is one inch. And we're gonna move it over in the X direction. That's probably good there. Maybe a little bit more. And then we're gonna move it up in the Y and down in the Z. And we're gonna to try to place that um, somewhere close to our workpiece. Being sure not to damage our dial indicator. Now that we know that we're close, we're gonna move up to where the ball is just gonna be on the, on the material somewhere below the edge. And we're gonna move up to the edge. Now we're getting close, so once again, refine our movements. We're in 10 thousandths movements now. And watching the gauge, watching the dial, we're gonna to wanna to load the dial. So you don't just barely touch it, you wanna load it so that you've got about 10 to 20 thousandths worth of pressure on there. So I'm gonna bump it down to one thousandths of an inch now. It looks like we've got all 15 thousandths worth of pressure on it now. So now we're, we've got about enough pressure. I like to tap the gauge to make sure there's no movement there and then we're gonna align our zero point. Once again, tap it and make sure we're still at zero. And now keeping it in one thousandths of an inch movements, we're gonna jog to the uh, uh, positive X axis. Oh, that's maybe 10 thousandths of an inch here. And you can see the dial, that's our error that we've got there. So that's showing us we're already 10 thousandths out over one inch. Well, approximately two inches and that's why we want to preload this so we're somewhere around 15 thousandths already there we can go ahead and stop and what you want to do is find something like a mallet or something like that that you can use your tool and uh, and we're gonna bring that in to start finally adjust finally tuning the clamp Of course we moved uh, pretty much where we're at so we're gonna have to it may take loosening up the lower left as well because we pulled it all the way forward and we're slightly out of out of movement there so it might take it but we're gonna try it right now and see uh, we'll jog it side to side and make sure that we've got uh, trying to get proper alignment here Looks like that stayed pretty much at zero. Uh, so we're gonna bring this down here. Once again, tap that, make sure we're good. And we're gonna jog back and see where our error is. And then you can repeat this several times before you can get a vise properly aligned. And that's what we'll do. Now what you're gonna see is we're now 15 thousandths from there to here. And typically what you wanna do is split the error on it. However, since I've already got this bottomed out all the way against the edge, um, I'm going to have to loosen up the lower left and give it a slight adjustment up. And we'll just give it a nice little love tap with our fine adjustment tool here. That was probably too much, but we'll see. And then give it a, a good snug. Now we're going to jog back to the left. And we'll preload our dial again, and we're gonna try to see if we, how far out we are. So we're back in uh, 10 thousandths of an inch movements. 
and this is very much a wash rinse repeat process. So right now what we've done is we've run it back and forth a couple of times. We've got it to where we have no more adjustment on the upper right hand side. So we're going to lock down the upper right hand side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zero that out. Now the upper right hand side's locked down so it can't move anywhere. So we're going to have to jog over to the left and instead of splitting the difference this time, we're going to move closer to zero. So we're going to go ahead and jog over to the, to the left hand side or the negative side of the stage. And we're going to zero it out by using our hammer. A little bit too far. There we go. Now we should be good. Make sure we've tapped the dial, make sure we're good that way. And we'll jog back the opposite direction. And we're out about a thousandth of an inch. So once again, we're gonna dial that in as zero. And it really depends on how fine you want to be in there. A thousandth of an inch over six inches probably isn't too, so bad, but I like to be as close as we can. So there we go. So we'll go ahead and bump that back. There, and now we'll go back. Okay, so now we're dialed in to less than five tenths all the way across and we're gonna go ahead and call that good. And we'll tighten it down. Once we're tightened down, we can jog up off the workpiece. And our clamps align. We'll go ahead and remove our tool. And our spindle lock, make sure you don't leave the spindle lock in there. And we're gonna put that back. And now we're gonna go over how you would clamp material in the vise. So the vise has a couple of different working positions. If you notice along the edges here, we've built in a, its own parallel system. So this is dropped down an eighth of an inch all the way around, and it corresponds with the eighth of an inch that's removed from the, the pressure block here. And uh, that's so that you can lift your workpiece up off of the, off of the clamp. You can pinch that in place that way and hold it in place, or you can just put the block down and locate it that way. And uh, for right now, we're gonna go ahead, we'll cover both ways. So for right now, we're gonna put it on the bottom. We're gonna set it in place, and uh, we're gonna just slightly snug up those quarter 20s using our 3 16 Just give it a, a good snug there, just so it could still slide by use of our 3 8 16 bolt here in the back. But we want it so that it can't lift. So you wanna have it snug. Once again, tighten it, back it off just a little bit. And then we're gonna bring up our, our pressure block here, our, uh, our uh, screw block. And this one we wanna tighten down. This one we wanna make sure that it's good and tight so that it can't move as we're trying to tighten it. Now from here, we're gonna go ahead and change to our, our uh, 3 8 inch tool. And we're gonna start putting just a little bit of pressure on there. It usually only takes about a quarter turn to put enough pressure on there. And once you've got that, you can't lift the material up or take it out, so you know you're good. And now you can snug down that pressure block. Then from here, you can go about milling. And that's not gonna come out. Now we'll cover putting it up in the uh, parallels portion. So we're gonna go ahead and break everything loose, snug it, uh, just basically make it snug. We'll loosen this guy up here. And now we're gonna lift our work up. We'll put it up against the inside edge of those, those corners. Now we're supported on three axes. You don't have to be supported on three sides. You could just support it here in the middle or up along the front edge. Maybe that's what we'll do. We'll snug it up along the front edge here. We'll set it in place. Once again, make sure we're good and snug here. Not, 
Not so much that we can't move it, but we wanna make sure we're good and snug. On the back piece, let's go ahead and adjust that screw back so we've got a full amount of travel. And we're gonna go ahead and lock that down. Once that's in place, use our 3 8 inch hex wrench and we're going to start snugging that up. And you, you'll probably want to use your hammer and tap down on the work to make sure it's good and flat, that it didn't lift or anything like that. But snug it up just a little bit. Once you've got that, you know you're good and tight. Go ahead and give your, your block a nice good snug so it won't move. And now you can go ahead and machine. Set your zero in any four of those corners or any one of those four corners, and you can go ahead and machine and that'll hold it in place. This vise works fantastic for thin stock as well as thicker blocks like this piece of uh, 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 material we've got here. And, uh, but other than that, it's, it's just a great little low profile vise. There, there wasn't another company that was making a vise as low as this one here uh, that we could find. And all, everybody who bought our machines, that was the first question that they asked was, how do we hold work? Um, there's a couple, I mean, there's, a million different ways you can hold work in, uh, in the machine, but this was probably the simplest thing that we could start supplying our customers immediately. And uh, like I said, right from day one, this has been a high seller for us, as well as one of those that, you know, we get a lot of reviews on it. People just love the product. So now that you know how to use it, go ahead and make some objects, shoot us some pictures, shoot us some video, send it to us. Um, and because we'd like to see what you're doing with it and uh, make sure you click like subscribe and click the alarm button down on the bottom of this channel so that any new updates we've got you can get and uh, we'll see you next time.